What's good, everybody? Now, the core of my beliefs at Beer Biceps is that fitness should not be the center of your life. Having a fit body and having a healthy lifestyle is important, but something that's as important as having a healthy lifestyle is also having fun at the same time. The only way you can be fit in the long term is if you can balance it out with a bit of fun once in a while. And that's what today's video is about. Now my personal opinion is that food is one of the most beautiful things in the world. It gives me more internal happiness than almost anything else. And that's the whole point of a cheat meal. You gotta understand that first and foremost, your cheat meal is to satisfy your mental craving. It's to satisfy that craving for happiness that you're getting inside your head. So in today's video, I will give you guidelines on how to go about a healthy cheat meal and how to make healthier food choices. But first and foremost, if you're craving something and if for most of the week you're eating healthy, you gotta understand that you deserve that cheat meal. So don't think too much about all these guidelines. This is just to take it to that next level in terms of health if you're super serious about your cheat meals. Now in one of my past videos called the cheat meal guide, I've spoken about the technical side of cheating on your diet. I've spoken about how you can enjoy a cheat meal without getting fat, how you can manipulate your calories. It's kind of a technical video. And today's video is not that technical, it's more on the fun side. Now rule number one of making better food choices is not looking at food as just food. Whenever you're looking at food, you gotta break it down into its constituent macros. That's how you decide if something's healthy or not. So when you're eating a burger, it's not just a burger. It's two slices of carbs and one slice of protein and all that fat you're getting from the sauce. That's called having correct macro vision. So I'm gonna use the power of Beer Biceps Macro Vision and break down some common cuisines to help you make better food choices. Here we go. Starting with the unhealthier options for a cheat meal, the worst of which are desserts. Now I'm not gonna dwell too much on desserts because I've already spoken about desserts a lot on Beer Biceps. But for now, all you need to know is that desserts, it's not just the sugar that's the bad part. Desserts are also made up of a lot of dirty fats and a lot of dirty carbs. So you gotta understand that it's the sugar, the dirty carbs and the dirty fat that are working together and keeping you fat. If you wanna get lean, the first step is giving up desserts entirely. Even when it comes to cheat meals, I'd still say avoid all forms of dessert. Cheat meal option number two, slightly better than desserts but still very much on the unhealthy side, is all vegetarian Indian junk food. Now I'm not dissing vegetarians or Indian food here, but you gotta understand that things like sev puri, pav bhaji, pani puri, or basically any chart you're getting on the road is not the healthiest option. Now there's a few reasons why wet junk food in India is unhealthy. The first of which is the abundant use of fried elements. I don't even need to talk much about this. The second is the abundant use of maida or refined flour. The third is the super high amount of fat that's used in preparing these food items. And the fourth, which I feel is a very important factor, is the lack of protein in these food items. Now, whenever you're eating something like a sev puri or a pav bhaji, where's the protein? You're just having potatoes on refined flour and to make it worse, that refined flour is deep fried. You're not getting anything, you're not adding any value to your body. So from that perspective, it's not a very wise option. So for all you vegetarians out there, I'm not telling you to not have junk food, but the solution to this is that wherever you can, try getting a bit of protein in these junk food meals. Remember, when it comes to veg junk food, it's all about making smarter decisions. So if you have to make a decision between a pav bhaji or a paneer bhurji, always go for the paneer bhurji. It's giving you that little extra bit of protein, which is adding some value to your overall nutrition. The third type of cuisine we're talking about is my personal favorite. It's Indian Chinese food. Now you gotta understand that traditional Chinese, Chinese is actually super healthy. A lot of the focus is on the protein and on stir frying the protein with just a little bit of oil and a lot of focus is on the vegetables. But Indian Chinese food is the slightly tastier, slightly unhealthier version of this traditional goodness. Now there's a few reasons why Indian Chinese food is still on the slightly unhealthy side of the spectrum. The first of which is the heavy use of MSG or Ajinomoto. I'm not gonna get deep into it because Ajinomoto actually deserves its own video. But you gotta understand that it's one of the most harmful substances used in Chinese cooking. It does enhance the flavor a lot, but it is doing some amount of damage to your body. The second reason Indian Chinese food is not the healthiest option is the heavy use of oil and masalas used in Indian Chinese cooking. Especially if you're having cheap Indian Chinese food, there's a very high possibility that the oil that they're using isn't of a very good quality. 
Remember, even they try to save costs, they're running a business. And in the process, you're ingesting a bad kind of fat. The third reason Indian Chinese cooking is not the healthiest option is the heavy use of sugar. Remember, a lot of Chinese dishes are all about the balance of flavors. And in the process of creating that balance, a lot of Chinese restaurants use a bit of sugar in their meals, which again, from a cheat meal perspective, if you're trying to stay healthy, isn't the healthiest option. And the final reason Chinese food isn't the healthiest option is the heavy use of carbs again. Now, whenever you order any kind of protein in a particular sauce in a Chinese restaurant, you're not just getting that protein. Before they put the protein in the sauce, they first deep fry it with a coating of carbohydrates. So you're getting that carb-coated protein and then you're eating it with rice. So again, this becomes a carbs with carbs situation. So it's not the healthiest in terms of weight loss. The next cuisine we're talking about is American junk food. And yes, it is marginally better than Chinese junk food in my opinion. Now here's the thing about American junk food. Yes, the focus is on the carbs. It's on the bread in the burger and the bread in the pizza. But you have the choice of turning the focus to the protein. So whenever we're talking about American junk food from a health perspective, there's a few rules you need to follow to make it slightly healthier. Again, the first of which is that you focus on the protein. Wherever you can, fill your stomach with meat or protein, not with bread. The second is that wherever you can, minimize your bread and carb intake. That'll take you a long way in terms of both weight loss and muscle gain. And the third is that again, wherever you can, you kind of reduce the fat intake a bit. So when it comes to burgers, ask the burger people to not put extra sauces inside the burger. And when it comes to pizzas, when the pizza arrives at your table, you can actually dry off a bit of the fat with a tissue paper. That'll reduce the overall caloric intake of the food a lot. Okay, so coming back home a little bit and turning our attention to Indian food. Now, Indian restaurant food can be healthy or unhealthy depending on your food choices. If you're smart about it, you won't put on weight. Okay, so if you're going to an Indian food restaurant, a Mughlai or a Punjabi restaurant, you have a choice between gravies and kebabs. Now, the thing with gravies is that they end up using a lot of cream and a lot of oil and just the overall fat content of the gravy is super high. Now, comparing that to kebabs, yes, they do use fat to base the kebabs, but when you compare it to gravies, kebabs are a much healthier option. So that's the first rule. Whenever you have a choice, ideally try sticking with kebabs or give more importance to the kebabs in your meal. Okay, and the second choice that you have when it comes to Indian food is the choice of carbohydrates. Now, wherever you can, ideally, you want to be having whole wheat based carbs. So that's something like a whole wheat roti or a paratha. Ideally, try avoiding something like naans or rumali rotis that are made with refined flour again or maida. And also, you gotta understand, if you can, always try avoiding butter naans or butter rotis. That again spikes up your calories in that Indian meal. Okay, and the third rule when it comes to Indian food is that ideally, try avoiding the rice dishes. Now, a lot of people end up ordering something like biryani or a pulao or something after they've had the butter chicken and the naan. You gotta understand that through the naan, you've already got an insulin spike. So if you have rice, it's again a carbs on carbs situation, which will give you a huge sugar rush and that sugar rush will end up with you getting fat. Okay, and the final cuisine I'm gonna talk about is continental food. And yes, of all the cuisines I've spoken about, this particular type of food is the healthiest. Now, when I say continental food, I don't mean the Indianized version of continental food. Now, you know how we've Indianized Chinese food? So traditional continental food is healthy, where they focus on the protein, on relatively clean carbs. You know, once in a while they'll have potatoes, but always the focus is on the protein. Now in Indian restaurants that serve continental meals, a lot of the focus is on creamy pastas and pizzas with super thick crust, where the focus is all on the carbs. That's what you want to avoid again. When it comes to continental food, just make healthier choices. Again, intentionally try picking a protein and a clean carb. So if you go to any continental restaurant, you'll always have the choice of ordering a chicken breast or a steak or a paneer steak or a tofu steak or something like that. Always, wherever you can, focus on the protein. Your protein should be the center of your meal and your carb should just be the Robin to the Batman. And that pretty much covers it all in terms of the cuisines that are commonly found in India. But you gotta understand that whenever you're talking about a cheat meal, if you're actually serious about making it super healthy, the best option is cooking it up yourself. And that's where I feel that cooking and fitness go hand in hand. Now, I've given you guys all these guidelines about eating out at a restaurant, but you gotta know that restaurants make money from serving good food. And good food most of the times equals a lot of high fat. And very often in Indian restaurants, what happens is that they 
try to save costs by not using good quality fats. From that perspective alone, anything that you cook up with home friendly healthy fats like ghee or coconut oil is much healthier than the dishes you eat at the restaurant. And remember guys, if you learn how to cook well, you can actually create restaurant quality food at home. Yes, even if the fat content is little high, anything homemade is always much healthier than eating out at a restaurant. Hey guys, so that was the video for today. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Now you gotta understand that there's a reason I put up cooking videos on Sundays. What I honestly feel is that cooking and food are as much a part of fitness as weight training and dieting are. And I feel like if you know how to cook, it's a very, very powerful tool to have to maintain a long-term fit lifestyle. So from that perspective, what I'd highly recommend is that if you're new to cooking, make sure you check out my recipes playlist on Beer Biceps. Most of the recipes are super easy and I feel that it's a great starting point in beginning your cooking journey. And you know what else? Girls love a guy who can cook. Either way guys, if you want to follow my personal fitness journey, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Beer Biceps, on Snapchat at Ranvi.1693. That's my Facebook page, make sure you give that a like as well. So until next time guys, from Ranveer, see you.